like Western Christianity, there are three areas that I've seen weaponization uh, very strongly. Um, I believe that marriage has been weaponized in Western Christianity. Giving mm. has been weaponized in Western Christianity. Sexuality mm. has been weaponized. He made some very good points and some bad points. Kirk Franklin recently had an interview with Cam Newton, and in this discussion, they talked about a lot of different things, but one of the things that people are talking about, and I want to cover it because I want to look at it from the biblical perspective, what the Bible actually says about this, is this issue relating to marriage. He makes a statement about the church or Christianity or Christians weaponizing things such as marriage, and it brings up the conversation, the topic, should people, particularly women, should they get married? Should they want to get married? Is that a good thing? Is it a bad thing? What does the Bible say about it? You, you know, she and I both have been victims of religious dogma. You know, she has seen the misogynistic uh, uh, tendencies of the church uh, in its view of women, uh, its handling of women, and how uh, a very strong patriarchal environment is not always the best suiting for women. Mm -hmm. Uh, but because there is a sense of somewhat authoritarian uh, posturing that can happen mm -hmm. in religious spaces against women. Um, you know, I myself know the weapon, I, like, like, like Western Christianity. Now, let me say this before he continues. One thing that I do not like is the negative finger pointing at the church uh, in regards to what the Bible teaches. Uh I don't have a problem with dogma if, as long as it's good dogma, but sometimes if you phrase it as though it's something negative, and it seems like that's kind of how he's doing it, phrasing it as though it's negative, it's not a negative thing if it's doctrine. Now, uh, you should be dogmatic on the things that the, that the Bible is dogmatic about. And this, these buzzwords such, such as authoritarianism and patriarchy and things like that, as though that's uh, necessarily a bad thing. It's not necessarily a bad thing, especially in the proper biblical context uh, that the Bible frames things. There are three areas that I've seen weaponization uh, very strongly. Um, I believe that marriage has been weaponized in Western Christianity. Giving mm. has been weaponized in Western Christianity. Sexuality mm. has been weaponized. It's very much... Now, before he goes on, he does not really speak about how sexuality has been weaponized. Now, we think we know what he's talking about when it relates to the LGBTQ alphabet community as it relates to them and the church. And there are those that believe the church has been unfair uh, in their treatment, which I don't think so. I don't, I don't think so. Just like, I don't think the church has been unfair as it relates to those who have committed murder, those who have stolen, those who have done all sorts of other things. As long as a person repented, well then fine. But if you're living that way, if you're doing those things, well then no, you cannot let those things go by and say, you know what? It's okay. We all sin. That's not how that works. Um, but because and possibly because of the industry that he's in, there are a lot of people who struggle with their sexuality uh, in the church or in Christian music or gospel music, or what have you. And he may know them and he may feel sympathetic to them. But that doesn't mean that they get a pass because he or I or anyone else may feel sympathetic to them. No, sin is sin. And we call those things out. So he never really gets into that. But on this issue of marriage, he does. Sin, you need to get married mm. without realizing that marriage doesn't fix sin. <laughs> okay, so now his point is <laughs> because you're living in sin. Now, first of all, this is not something that's just unique to Christianity. No matter what religion a person is part of, be it uh, Muslim, I mean, be, be it Islam, be it Hinduism, Buddhism, what have you, in various cultures, that's kind of how it's always been throughout time. That as a woman gets older, people are going to naturally ask, when are you going to get married? That's just natural. Why? Because, well, we would not be here on this planet had it not been for families. The problem is we have kind of determined that families can be different nowadays. It's okay to have a mother without the father there and the children there or vice versa. And that's, a, that's not a good family. Now, unfortunately, we have those, but it's not the way that it's intended, and it doesn't work nearly as well as it does with a husband, a wife, and the children there. Is that, is that to say that all marriages are good marriages, and, and a single mother or a single father can do an, an effective job? That's not what I'm saying. What I am saying, though, is the way that God ordained it to be a mother and a father there. 
And so people are going to, when you come around your family, your, that's what your family does. They're going to say, hey, sweetie, when you get married. And they'll do the same thing for, for a young man. No one in the family, the aunts and uncles and grandparents and so forth, are uh, wanting to see the younger people of the family to continue just to live uh, separately from, from a, a spouse or to live singly. Uh, they want to see them get married, continue the family line and legacy and have children, grandchildren, nieces, and nephews and things like that. And so that is a, a natural thing. It's not weaponizing anything. And then something else that he says when he says marriage doesn't fix sin. Well, if a person is in sin or wants to be with someone and they're out there doing things sexually that they should not do, does marriage fix that? Well, we're going to see that it is the solution that God has if a person wants to be involved in something, have some sort of activity, well, marriage absolutely is a solution. But the little laugh, like, ha, 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 like, yeah, uh, see, I'm not so bad after all from this, from the host. Yeah, you are. You're talking. And, and any woman listening to this can attest in our culture. Don't be no 30, 35-year-old single black woman and go to the family reunion. All the older women are going to do them. They're going to look at you and wonder and question you and challenge you on what? Why you not married? Where your man at? Where your kids at? All that. Like it's a prerequisite for identity and value that if you don't have a man, if you don't have kids, that something about you is broken. Mm. Now, let's tell the truth. Let's be honest. Let's tell the truth. Shame the devil. Many times, especially today, we've got a lot of women and men, but we're speaking about the women right now who aren't married who are single in their 30s and maybe single in their 40s and are wishing or hoping, wishing they could have had that taken care of in their 20s. Problem is the way that our minds have shifted is that we have moved the importance of getting married and having a family as though that's a bad thing. Remember, the Bible wants us, God wants us as believers to get married, have children. The children are like... Um, arrows in the quiver that, that the Lord uses. And so that's how we go about uh, spreading the glory. If Christians don't have babies, then guess we're going to have no more Christians because we're going to die out eventually. And so again, it's not a bad thing. Remember what the Bible says. Jesus says, matter of fact, let's go, let's go to Hebrews first. Hebrews 13, 4. Marriage is to be held in honor among all and the marriage bed is to be undefiled. Four fornicators and adulterers will be judged. And so if that's you living that way, it is much better to be married. That way, guess what you're not going to be? You won't be a fornicator being judged by that. And so marriage is to be honored. And that's why Jesus makes a statement, quoting what uh, or stating what he said in Genesis, uh, when they brought this person who is, uh, or when they bring in testing Jesus about divorce, uh, Jesus goes on to say, he says, and he answers, says, have you not read that he who created them from the beginning made them male and female uh, dealing with this issue of sexuality? But even more so, he says, for this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife and the two shall be one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. What therefore God has joined together, let no man separate. God wants two people to come together and be one. And is that his plan? That is goal? That's his design? Sure it is. That's why he states uh, it is not good in Genesis 2. It is not good as he's looking for a suitable help meet for Adam, it is not good for man to be alone. So what was his solution? A woman, a wife. Do you understand how dysfunctional these messages are? Yeah. And how we super spiritualize these messages. He that findeth the wife findeth the good thing. Yeah, but Paul also said, I wish that some of you were like me. I wish some of you could be single because some of you could even be more useful in the kingdom mm -hmm. if you were single, Paul said. Mm -hmm. Now let's make sure we have it un understood. Um, Paul is not saying that you should be, he says he would like, as a matter of fact, he says, this is not a command from the Lord. Basically, I'm giving my opinion. I would love to see you like me and meaning that it would be good if you could be single because you could devote all your time to the Lord. That makes the assumption of two things. One, you will devote your time to the Lord. You will not have divided loyalties. Yes. When you are married and you've got children you must give some time to that, to those things, and all of it cannot be devoted towards the Lord. Oh, by the way, you also have to give time towards your job and things like that and eating. Um, but when you're single, that's one less or two less if it's uh, a spouse and children, two less things you have to worry about. 
But that presupposes that you're going to devote your time to the Lord. There are a lot of single people out there who are, who are out there living their best life and they're not devoting their time to anything but themselves. So that presupposes that you must be or you should be devoting yourself to the Lord. And then the second thing is that you're doing so with integrity, that you're doing so with sexual purity. I want to read a passage and I want to highlight something that this passage may actually be saying. Uh, in 1 Thessalonians 4, chapter verse 4. Matter of fact, let's back up. Uh, for this is the will of God, your sanctification, that is that you abstain from sexual morality. Verse 4, that each of you know how to possess his own vessel in sanctification and in honor. Now, what it looks like is this word vessel or body might refer to the person's body. And then earlier he says in verse 1, he says, finally, brethren, the word is adelphoi, is he meaning brethren collectively like male and female or just males? Well, in this case, he may possibly, probably be focusing on males. Why is that? He says that each one of you may know how to possess his own vessel in sanctification and in honor, not in lustful passion like Gentiles who do not know God, that no man should, let me just leave it right there, but this issue, this word vessel, uh, if we go to the BDAG and look at what this word means, how this is possibly or probably used, uh, this word, if we drop down, if you see it right here, where do I find it? Uh, right here. If you see this highlighted right here, let me make this a little bit bigger. So I want you guys to see this. Uh, he says also probable for 1 Thessalonians 4, 4 is penis. Now, I don't want to be crude or anything like that or whatever, but is that what he's saying? That each man, let's go back to this passage, that each man should know how to possess his own male organ. Well, that kind of makes sense, doesn't it? The problem is that oftentimes you don't, we don't, we just don't know how to possess our own organ like that um, because we are sinful. We've got a flesh. And so we want to do things. And so what Paul's remedy for that is don't just be in sin. If you can't possess your own in honor, then do so in, in a fashion that brings God, that brings God glory by being married. Now, marriage is a good thing, but marriage, Paul said, but marriage is a necessary distraction. Mm. Yeah. Now, if you notice, <laughs> Cam Newton is, like, marriage is a necessary distraction. Well, why is he saying that? Well, the reason why he's saying that is because Cam Newton has, what, eight children by 12 women. I don't know, maybe 10 children by 13 women, 13, 12, somewhere in that number. He's got, he's got more, more mothers that he does children, something like that. And so this is really speaking music to his ears. No, Kirk, what you should have been doing was bringing him to the right path. No, Cam, you need to get married. You need to stop stop hanging out here in these streets, doing whatever it is you're doing, making babies after baby after baby, being all over YouTube and Facebook about, about your business out there because you don't know how to handle your own vessel. You don't know how to, how to handle your own body with honor. And Cam knows better, but this for him gives him a way out. Yes. Do you know, do you know that there are some people, I have many friends that, that, that were in ministry at church and the church has told them, if you're going to be in ministry, you can't be single. We're not going to let you work with the youth ministry if you're single. You can't do this if you're single. And so what people do, they quickly get married, trying, thinking that they're fulfilling God's will for their lives, but they are, they, are, they are fulfilling man's dogma. There are times where churches, and I've seen this happen, where they want people to be married uh, if they're going to be in ministry. There are a lot of churches that want the pastor, the senior pastor, to be married. Well, why is that? Well, it might be out of wisdom. Now, is it a command that you must be married to be in the ministry? No, absolutely. There is there is no such thing. Uh, we've got people who are not married, such as Paul. We don't know that he's ever married. John is never told to have a, to have a spouse. As a matter of fact, there's only a few uh, that we can think of that don't have or that we do know that do have spouses. But we know that Paul and Barnabas did not have a spouse. You can be single and be used by God. You can be single and have purpose. Being married is not a prerequisite for God's hand on your life. It is not, but we've weaponized it. And he's right. It's not a prerequisite. It's not a prerequisite. You can be single uh, and be used by God. It happens all the time. It happens in the scripture. 
the issue is you just want to make sure that one, the appearance of any sort of sin. And so even when I was over um, uh, in my leadership capacity, when I had other people that would work with the youth, uh, we were hesitant to make sure that single people would be involved with the youth. And you've got to be careful that you don't have a single male who's older with teenage girls or a single female with teenage boys or unfortunately today, uh, some single male who's struggling with his sexuality with teenage boys. And so you want to be careful. You want to be careful that the pastor uh, is not getting unnecessary attention and he not be able to handle himself because now you've created a bigger problem. And so, yeah, it's not it's not a prerequisite, but sometimes people do that out of the abundance of caution. So, no, you don't have to. But is it preferred? Is it better? Well, sure it is. And then crucify people mm. with a camera. Right there, right there. <laughs> and then crucify people when those same marriages fail. Do we have a problem amongst professed Christians and divorce? Yes, we do. Now, let me just say this, though. Uh, the divorce rate is the same, virtually the same, between Christians, professed Christians, and non-Christians. However, the divorce rate is not the same with professed Christians who attend church weekly versus the world is significantly lower. And so we cannot necessarily measure everyone's faith, but we can determine that people that tend to go to church more tend to be uh, more committed. Now, I'm not saying always, so so someone's going to want to write back at me, but in many cases, a person wants to show their allegiance, their love out of obedience by going to church, which we should. Uh, and those that do so weekly have a lower divorce rate. And so, uh, but again, that's not a stat that we should point to either to say, well, you shouldn't get married. You don't have to get married for that. No. What does the Bible say? Ask me, Kurt. Why are you not married? You got all these kids. But my kids aren't without a father. Mm, that's good. This industry no, that's not good. He said, mm. no, that's, he said, Cam said, my kids are not without, without a father. Cam and anyone else. When you have multiple children in different location, you can't be as an effective father as you would be if they were in the house with you. You've got a your your time is divided. You can't be there. Now, if you're going to talk about someone's allegiance and time being being d divided, if they're married, focus on God. Well, even more so if you are a father, if you're a parent, and you're not in the same place with your children, especially if you got multiple children. One is bad enough if you've got a child, one child somewhere that you don't live, but then if you've got two children or three children someplace where you don't live, well then how then do you spend time equal with them? How are they getting enough of you? And then more to the point, what example are you showing? Not any sort of example. And then Kirk needs to do a better job of saying, no brother, we got to fix this. Lifestyle has put fear in my heart to fear divorce Mm. more than I want to get married. Mm. Mm. And I'm very sorry that, that, that even the world that I come from has attributed to that. I, I, I would be honored as, as, as your brother to be praying for you, mm. that, to be lifting you up, uh, encouraging you, challenging you, whether, whether it's good counseling therapy, just to continue to walk through that because those are real things. How has we how has the church contributed to that, to him not wanting to get married? The, no, that's his own playboy lifestyle, whatever it is, don't apologize for that. Don't apologize for his sin. Uh, it is clear it, he should be married or should abstain if he cannot control himself. Now, concerning the things which I write, it's good for a man not to touch a woman. But because of immoralities, each man is to have his own wife. Each woman is to have her own husband. That's what happens. So now the question is, should women and should males get married? Sure they should. Now, if they don't want to, well, then don't get married. Don't get married if you don't want to. However, if you don't want to, don't do the things that married couples are allowed to do. If you want to do the things that married people can do, then get married. But if you don't want to get married, well, then you're going to have to show some discipline. If you are burning, well, then guess what? As he says, you, male or female, need to get married. Do not put marriage off for your career only to come back later and say, you know what, I wish I would have gotten married because I can promise you this, and people can testify to this, the older you get, it might become harder. Your uh, options, 
might decrease or your options, the likelihood of your options having more baggage that you may not want will be there. Some people don't want to marry a woman who already has children. Well, if you wait till your 30s or 40s, the likelihood is that you will. Some women don't want to marry a man with children. If you wait till your 30s or 40s, the likelihood is that you will. You'll probably you may marry someone who's already been married, someone who's gone through all sorts of things, someone who is going to compare you with a previous relationship. Why? Because they've got 30 or 40 years uh, of living and they've got a lot of issues that they've had to work through with you. However, if you're in your 20s, then less issues. You grow together. You're both still maturing. You can mature together. If you love the Lord and you want to serve the Lord and him only. Amen. Wonderful thing. If you want to do so, but you can't control yourself, you've got things that you want to do, you want to experience with another person, well, then do so in the God honoring fashion by getting married. And so should you get married? You should. Do you have to get married? No. If you don't want to get married, don't. Waiting, is that a bad thing? Not necessarily, but it will. It could cause some issues. Do not sacrifice uh, your future for the present. Meaning, if you know you want to get married, you don't have to wait till you're 30 or 40. Do not do that because I've seen, you've seen so many people who are now regretting um, putting off or having what they would say too much fun. So I would say this, if a person wants to get married, well then get married. Does that mean go out and find the first thing, the first one, the first man, the first female? No, that is, that's not what that means. You have standards, do not compromise. Uh, make sure though that you show yourself to have standards. Make sure that you show yourself to be one that is not going to compromise. I can promise you this, that if you stand on the word of God, that if you show yourself to be a godly person, not desperate, not seeking, not um, willing to compromise, not willing to let down any standards, I promise you this, male or female, even irrespective of your age, you will stick out. People will notice the godliness in you at some point in time, and that will be the thing that's going to hook you with someone else who's also godly. Because if you haven't lowered your standards, you'll find someone else who also has standards as well. Not perfect. Not that he has to be uh, the right height, the right build, the right income, and she has to be the right height, the right build, what have you. No, there's going to be, you're not getting the perfect mate. That part we already know. There is no such perfect mate. The only person in the history of the world to ever have a perfect mate is my wife. It's the only one. And then, well, I take that back. I also, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. My wife uh, is the perfect mate. The rest of you women, you pale in comparison. But no, I'm just kidding. But there is no such thing as a perfect mate. There's going to be some things about the person you don't like and they don't like about you. That's just life. Do not enter into marriage thinking that you won't have difficulties. You are going to have difficulties. You have problems get along with yourself sometimes. And so those are going to happen. But most importantly, you love the Lord. They love the Lord. And then you love each other. If you cannot handle yourself separately as singles uh, without sinning, then get married. Amen. <music>